long ago when there were no seasons, the balance of nature was determined by the whim of the gods and goddesses. Light was not defined by dark, and the passage of time was not marked by winters, spring or summer. In this time of innocence, a girl called Kore was wandering the green hills picking wildflowers. The breeze carried the sweet smell of narcissus in its wings and Kore wandered further to find its source. From a distance, Hades, Lord of the Underworld, was spying and decided he wanted Kore for himself to be his bride. As she reached for the intoxicating white flower, a calamitous howl split the air. The earth opened up with a groaning crack and Hades leapt down, driving a team of four black horses who thundered towards her. Kore was abducted and dragged into the underworld. As she fell, she was ripped out. She lost her body, her substance. Everything was taken from her, the ground beneath her feet. For a long time, she lived as nothingness. Slowly, she came to be the invisible girl. She was just an outline with bits of blood and guts in the middle. Lilith came to her aid and said, I will hold your rage. Eat this apple so you will never forget. You will never forget. I will never forget. The invisible girl took the apple and slowly began to heal and grow. She grew skin and a form and became the original urchin. She was still scarred and deformed. She had no mouth, but she was healing. Newt the sky goddess called out to her, I am from the star people. I will guide you. I am with you always. And she arched her long body over the sky, making a blanket of stars. After a while, the original urchin grew spirit and became the urchin. The urchin had some friends in the underworld, Chiron the centaur and a mutant called Frank. They were very protective of the urchin. Sometimes Chiron would buck and bite at threats or run away with the urchin on his back. If there was danger, Frank would become dead and wooden and squeeze the urchin's spirit. This is how they protected her. The urchin progressed and it was time for her to be crowned as Persephone, Queen of the Underworld and Bride of Hades. She was dressed in an owl feather cloak and veils. Her two attendants were transformed as moths and her familiar was by her side. She had six pomegranate seeds to eat. Persephone learned many skills and passed many tests as queen. She grew fond of ruling the underworld, coming to know comfort in its darkness and isolation. Meanwhile, in the upper world, her mother Demeter wailed and cried in anguish. Where is my daughter? Demeter was the goddess of fertility and crops. She froze the land and refused to nourish the earth with a single bud or sprout. For nine days and crazed with grief, she scoured every corner searching for Persephone. On the tenth day, Hecate, the crone goddess of crossroads came to her. She was a witness. She had been in her cave that day and overheard Kore's screams. Hecate had rushed from her cave, but it was too late. Turns out there were other witnesses too. Helios, the sun god with an all-seeing eye, knew about it. No one wanted to mess with Hades, but Helios told Demeter and Hecate where Kore was. Now it was known far and wide that Hades had a non-negotiable clause in his underworld realm because death is indisputable. Once you enter, you cannot come back. 
a message was sent. Release my daughter or it's winter forever. Pressure mounted and Hades buckled, putting in a counter offer. Persephone had eaten six pomegranate seeds. She would spend six months in the underworld and six months with her mother on earth. Each year when the Narcissus flower bloomed, Persephone would descend to her underground palace below the surface. A deal was struck. Hecate came to Persephone. She said, winter is over. You have thawed. Come this way. It's time for you to return to the outer world. Persephone, as if in a dream, began to climb the stairs to the outer world. The urchin came along as her guide and companion. Never forget they pledged to each other and merged as one. She could feel a light breeze and start to make out shapes and memories. And stepping through, she arrived on the surface of the earth through the roots of the boab tree. She was ready. Trauma splits and fragments your entire being. You're thrown into an abyss. Innocence is gone. After a while, you get to know the terrain of depression, fear and disassociation. You start to find your way in the darkness and pick up resources, tools and guides. You fill back your body. When you've thawed and you've merged back with your spirit, you can return to the outer world, live the life of a human again and enjoy the earth and all she offers. But the call is always there. And if you don't go willingly, the underworld will take you regardless. You have to make your offering to Hades. Time in the darkness gives space to privately restore and recover some of the lost bits and grow new skin. You develop protection, wisdom, self-knowledge, the things you didn't have before the abduction. The contract between Hades and Demeter struck a balance between life, death and rebirth. Because one cannot be without the other. Light is defined by the dark and the passage of time is marked by the turning wheel of the seasons. When the call comes to descend below the surface, step in consciously and know when you're ready you'll emerge with grace in the spring. She changes everything she touches, and everything she touches changes. I'm Meryl Kay, and this is The Underworld Story. Support my channel with a like, share, comment or subscribe, or find me on Instagram at my underscore mystery school, or on my website www.merylkay.com. Thanks for watching.